Excited? Yep. Me too. Uh, hi everyone, I'm George. This is George. Say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, George won the uh, 30,000 subscriber giveaway, which is an Aquascape makeover. So, uh, as you've just seen, we've been to Aquarium Gardens to get all the products, all the hardscape, etc., that we need to create the Aquascape. Uh, we've got the tank here. This is a Danelay Escapers tank, 50 litres. Take you through the whole journey. I can't wait. As you guys know, I'm passionate about aquascaping and promoting aquascaping, and this is just, you know, one of the many ways we can help promote aquascaping, George. And hopefully, yep. you're going to look after the scape and do your own updates, maybe, on your yeah, own channel well. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a great scape. We've got loads of really cool materials from Aquarium Gardens. I have to say thank you so much to Aquarium Gardens for sponsoring this whole process. So um, shout out to Dave Pierce, the owner. Thank you so much. Um, check out Dave's channel. He's got his own YouTube channel and check out his website as well. I'll leave a link in the description. So let's go. Open, kind of open area. Yeah, around that, here, wasn't it? Was it like this? So. Yeah. So this is an important thing. So George, just, when this is in George's bedroom at home, he walks into the bedroom this way. And so we can actually deliberately keep an open area around here and around the front as well. So we've got a new tank. So um, basically um, the old tank leaked. I think it was damaged a little bit in transit maybe. Yeah. So I'm um, not sure exactly how it happened. It happened, it's no problem. Um, thank you so much to Danelay for supplying this brand new Danelay Nano Cube 60 litres. So we're going to change the lighting, we're not going to use a Twinstar 450, we've got a, a Twinstar 300C, it's actually adjustable, so it's not, the actual light unit itself is 30 centimetres, this is about 38 centimetres I think, but it is adjustable, So, uh, and we're using low light plants, so it's not particularly high powered light, but it's going to be absolutely fine for the for the plants we're using today. It's no problem. George feels really bad about breaking this tank, I think, but everyone's a winner. Okay? Yeah. Don't feel bad? Okay. Yeah? Yeah. You feel good? Feel excited? Yeah, we're excited. We're, we're, we're going to escape. Okay, let's get the packaging off then. Just do a brief run through of what we're going to do. So we've got soil, we've got some lovely gravel here, Unipack Nordic gravel. It's got a lovely like uh, whitey grey flex in it. Uh, which will mirror and blend with the colour of the stone. So this is called grey mountain stone, also known as elephant skin stone. Really lovely, quite similar to mini landscape rock in terms of its colour, but it's a bit kind of more a smoother texture and I really like it. I don't use this very much, so I'm really looking forward to using it today. We're going to have a sandy, gravelly um, rock border to open here and then at the front there. So soil, sand, rocks in between, yeah. So first thing I'm going to do is put the rocks in. So we've put our rocks in, grey mountain stone, we've used one, two, three, four, five. We've created a border effect. So we'll put cosmetic sand in the front and then soil in the back. But before we do that, we're actually gonna put our wood in and then attach the wood to a stone and then bury the stone in the soil and that's gonna hopefully prevent the wood from floating. So what I'm doing now, I'm just gonna have a rough plan of where the wood is gonna kind of lie. And then we've got this epic piece here, which is gonna come out the top. Thanks, George. But we also need to make sure that the light unit fits on there. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we've got a rough plan for the wood. I think that looks great already. It kind of almost aquascapes itself. We've cable tied three small pieces of manzanita together, and then we've cable tied them to a stone, which is gonna help it stay sunken and not floating, hopefully. It's a lot of open area around here, but we're gonna plant in there. We've got the-, the What about having this a little bit lower? Lower? Yeah, because when you- Oh, creeping over the- yeah, like how you did it for... Oh yeah, that's better, isn't it? Yeah. Perfect. Nice one, George. Okay, so we've got the hardscape in. I think it looks great, George. What do you think? Amazing. We've tied uh, stones to the wood to prevent it from floating, hopefully. Next step, 
put soil in the background and then sand in the front. So let's just have a little bit of a chat about the soil. This is Tropica Aquarium Soil Powder. So it's exactly the same product as the regular soil, but it's a much finer texture. Now, it's not absolutely necessary to use this, but it is ideal for plants with much kind of more delicate root structure. We're using quite a lot of tissue culture plants today, so it's ideal for that. It's also good for keeping a sense of scale. So if you're using a nano aquarium, uh, the finer the texture is generally the better to give you this enhanced sense of scale. So the soil also provides nutrients to the plant roots, which is really great. It also has a high cation exchange capacity, which means it grabs nutrients from the water locks it into the soil and makes those nutrients available to the plant roots. So with aquascaping it's all about, and planted tanks in particular, it's all about trying to give the plants everything they need. So plenty of nutrients through their roots, which they get through this, plenty of nutrients through their leaves, which they get through the liquid fertilizer, and always use this product these days, the Aquascaper Complete Liquid Plant Fluid, developed by myself in conjunction with Evolution Aqua, Awesome product, it's been using it for a couple of years now and it hit the market probably about a year ago. And it's a really, really good liquid fertilizer, it contains absolutely all the nutrients you need for your plants. No need to buy more than one bottle, everything you need in the one bottle. So George is gonna pour the soil in nice and gently using a jug just behind the rocks. Okay, so George has put the soil in, gone to about a three inch or eight centimetre depth at the back, sloping slightly forward, and that's gonna help uh, keep the wood in place, but it's also gonna allow uh, plenty of room for root penetration from the crypts, which normally have huge root structures. Uh, next step is to insert our Nordic gravel. Same sort of principle as before, but obviously in front of the, the stones. Uh, it tends to bounce around a lot from the glass, so just Try and get it down as low as you can to the base. Don't worry too much. If you do get some of the gravel on the soil, it's not a problem. It's gonna be heavily planted anyway, so we won't see that. Okay, next I've got some Denele Rio Zingu uh, Scaper Hunter gravel here. I've just pre-rinsed it because it is really it can really cloud the water. So I just grabbed small handfuls I'm actually going to wedge this in between the rocks uh, and the soil and that's going to hopefully help prevent the soil from creeping forward as well. So you can actually just push it in quite firmly and it also adds a really nice texture and a, and a nice transition from like the, the large texture of the stone to the finer texture of the sand and this is a you know, it's a nature aquarium style aquascape, so we want to you know, use lessons from nature and try and mimic nature if we can to help really create this beautiful, serene looking aquascape. So George is prepping the parva first of all. Going to split each pot into probably three portions. We've also got some tissue culture, the Tropica one to grow Undulatus red. And these are going to be planted around the rocks towards the front of the aquarium. And then the larger crypts will be planted in the background. So were you like really shocked when you found out you won? Yeah. Yeah. My dad said, I ran downstairs. So tell the viewers how you found out, it's quite a funny story. So you, uh, uh, I was doing a live stream, wasn't I? I missed the majority of the live stream because I'd been in the bath. Yeah. And then I joined it and people in the comments were saying congratulations George, so I didn't know if it was me or a different George. I emailed you to find out whether it was me or not and you did it what, so. Yeah. Over the moon. Happy days. <laughs> so I really like these, um, this style of aquascaping doing it helping out someone and you know maybe every every big subscriber jump I get I might do something similar because it seems to work out quite well again shout out to Karen Gardens for supplying all of these amazing plants hardscape soil they even supplied the new tank um, but I am going to get a replacement for Aquarium Gardens for it because it's been too much for art to ask for a brand new tank so I'll ask Denley uh, to hopefully replace 
this one for aquarium gardens but it's a nice tank the 60 litre cube nano cube I prefer the scapers tank because I prefer a bit of a wider footprint this is a quite tall aquarium but still it, it works really well and we've used really tall hard scape and I think it, it kind of lends itself the scape lends itself quite nicely to this to this aquarium so George has prepped the crypts really nicely here and now he's planting the tallest in the back left and then going to work our way forward to the shorter species towards the front. Okay guys, um, so we've planted pretty much all of the rooted plants now. So we've got a mixture of Cryptocorni parva, Cryptocorni welkeri, uh, Molomniae, and there's a, an unknown one in there, Cryptocorni mix, so we're not sure what that is. Mm -hmm. And actually I quite like that about crypts, that you kind of don't know how they're going to grow. I kind of like that surprise element to them. So yep. um, all crypts uh, will tolerate low light, which is ideal because it's obviously going to be shaded by the wood. We're going to put um, some windelov fern in there, which we'll talk about later. There's going to be um, some Anubius and Bucovalandra as well attached to the wood, plus some moss. So yes, it's going to be quite shaded, um, which is absolutely fine because crypts are actually are fine in the shade. Um, so next, I think we need to attach our rheophyte plants. So we've got a right good mixture of Buca philandra and Anubius. Do you want to go and get them over, mate? Oh, and the Hygophila finita feeder. So George is like me, he loves his Buca philandra. And um, we've got, I think, three or four species here. So um, we've got some uh, mini needle leaf from uh, Denelay. Beautiful, small, one of the smallest uh, Buca philandras commonly available. Buca philandra thea, Buca philandra species red from Tropica. It's, this goes in like a, a more of a reddy colour depending on the lighting. And then we have some Anubius mini mini, which is from Aquaflora. It's like a smaller version of Petite. Uh, beautiful Anubius species. And we've got Anubius paxang, which looks very similar to the Pangolino, Anubius pangolino. Uh, from both from aquaflora and then last but not least our last rheophyte plant which can be planted into the soil or as a rheophyte but I really like it as a rheophyte it rheophyte if you didn't know is just basically a plant that attaches to decor uh, so we've got the tropical one to grow hygrophila pinnitivida now this looks amazing when it's attached and if you put it high up in the water column it gets more light and then you can get really accentuate the red coloration of the plant as well and um, we've grabbed some, this is called Taiwan Moss or Taxophyllum alternans. This is actually uh, grabbed out of one of the display tanks at Aquarium Gardens. So thank you again to Aquarium Gardens for sponsoring uh, this video and the whole makeover. Uh, so this is ready, ready adapted to submerged state so it should start growing in earnest pretty much straight away in Georgia's setup when he gets home. So more than enough there. Oh. Yep, loads of plants, let's go. Boo. This is Microsorum terapus, a windelov. So, uh, windelov fern. So, do you know? Do you know why they call it windelov? No. So the founder of Tropica okay. in 1970, that was six years before I was born, uh, it's called Holger Windelov, Danish guy. And uh, this plant is named after him. So it's a special kind of variety of fern. It's got like, these ends that's just splayed, really attractive. I've met Holger a couple of times. In fact, I met him when I was in Tizzy. Uh, you can check out the vlogs from there. But on my Instagram, I think there's actually a photo of me with in fact, I'll get it on the, on the screen right now. You can see a picture of him. So yeah, absolute legend. And this plant is named after him. So really cool. And like my, most Java ferns, relatively easy to grow. It doesn't need CO2 or high light, although it will benefit from both. Um, so we're going to put this as a focal point plant. So you know about the rule of thirds? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I reckon around about here. Yep. So do you want to see if, keep it on the wood and then just sort of maybe, well, I'll leave you to it and see, see, see what you think. Uh, it's really important that we keep this wet because once java fern dries out it tends to die off really quickly so just must, must, must keep that wet. Now we've got one more plant, a little dollop in the knot in the elbow if you know what I mean, in the little cranny. Like that. And then just repeat the process. It, can even, it, will, it will potentially even grow out the top of the tank as well. Which sure looks super cool. 
It is the most light demanding plant out of them all, so that's why we're going to put it in the upper portion of the tank. We've actually got loads, probably more than enough, but always better to have too much and enough choices. And then last thing, we've got the moss, haven't we? Yep. Do you want to get that? So if you just got, grab like little square sort of centimetre, quite thin layers, it's going to be absolutely loads in there. We don't need anywhere near all of it. So again, just sort of randomly choose an area. So it's important to use gel type super glue. Well, gel type is much easier to use because it doesn't run. So if you imagine gluing on a vertical surface, the, the, the glue will potentially run and, and it, it tends to turn white as well. So it looks really ugly and super obvious. Okay, I think that's enough, mate. Okay guys, so that's the aquascape complete. I'm really happy with it. It's exceeded my expectations. How about you, George? Yeah, I think it's turned out great. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you leave a thumbs up, comment if you can, what's been your favorite bit of the video, and you know what I'm gonna say next? What I'm gonna say next, George? Keep on scaping. Take care, guys. Cheerio.